so I'm here right next to one of my favorite plants of all time, Ponderosa lemon. And these are not grapefruits, although they look like grapefruits. These are actual lemons. Um, apparently they started by accident uh, in Maryland, 1880s or so. Um, and then they sustained and they started to um, get commercial appeal in the 1900s. Um, this Ponderosa lemon I bought um, at Logie's Greenhouse in Connecticut, and it actually was a graft of their Ponderosa lemon tree, which is, I don't know the exact age, but well over 100 years old. I think it, is, it might even be almost 110 years old. So why do I love these? Because, I mean, look at these lemons. Come on. I mean, you can't, you, you can't, I, and this, this is not a lemon on steroids. You know, when people come over my house, they're like, oh my God, you've given that lemon so much. You know, what do you use for food? And I try to tell them, I don't use any food. This is just a ponderosa lemon. This is how they're supposed to be. Um, but I mean, it's just, they're so attention grabbing. Again, super easy to grow. Um, they like to be outside. They'll go outside June to October again. They can't stay outside in the winter time. It's too cold. Even if they get a little bit of a frost, they're done. They're not as strong as the Kalamundin orange, which we just saw, but they're pretty, they're pretty strong. They'll, 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 they'll take a little bit of cold. Not much. You gotta get them in. No frost. Frost, you're done. So how do I keep these flowering inside? Well, above me, I have some grow lights. Um, and then I have some, like, if I turn these on, they're pink and purple grow lights. It looks like a spaceship. My neighbors think that maybe funky things are happening. But really, the only funky things happening is that I'm growing my half dead, um, that's embarrassing, hibiscus and all my citrus fruit. fruit. So if you come um, closer to the plant, um, this plant fruits and flowers at the same time. And so you can see these little flowers up here. What actually, what happens if these guys were outside is the bees and the hummingbirds and all those nice little insects come and they fertilize the lemon. That's how the cal calamundin gets fertilized. You know, you need some fertilization for the fruit to happen. Um, the calamundin, lemon, uh, calamundin orange um, fertilizes itself. And the ponderosa really does fertilize itself. I don't do much. Um, but if I want to guarantee that one of these flowers is going to produce fruit, so you can come in here and let me spin this around so you can see. These are brand new flowers that just opened. They smell a 10, amazing. But you can see what's happening. So, so here are some brand new flowers opening. These haven't opened. This is almost gone, but deep, deep, deep down inside, you're gonna see a little lemon forming. Some of these are gonna take and some of them aren't. Um, these are little lemons that have already formed. But to be on the safe side, if I want these things to fertilize, I find myself a little Q-tip. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this yellow stuff, the pollen, and I'm going to take it and I'm going to gently put it inside the flower. I'm going to take this pollen. It may sound gross, people, but it's nature. And I'm going to put it in another flower and cross-pollinate the flower. So this is what the bees would do. In nature, they go from flower to flower and they, fur they, they help transfer pollen, which will then be used to um, create the fruits. And so sometimes I'll use the Q-tip, sometimes they'll just blow in there. You gotta get the juices going. Um, and again, why I love this tree is there's always some activity. Um, so I have flowers and then I have a lot of fruit. Don't worry, this thing's gonna get pruned once I harvest it. But look at this. So. Here's like, there was stage one with the flowers. Oh, those are my dogs, it's pleasant. Dogs and fruit. Um, this is a baby lemon. So lemons look like limes to begin with. And then eventually they ripen and turn yellow. That's Bruno. Bruno doesn't like limes. He prefers a banana, but we don't have bananas right now because they were all out at the store. Anyways, um, here's the two differences between the little 
ponderosa lemon, not quite adult-like in the big adult lemon. So look at this, this is amazing, the size of this lemon, so cool, such a fun plant. These are all getting harvested. What am I gonna do with this? I can make lemonade, I can make lemon pie, I can make lemon pudding. Again, lemon juice is, is just good to eat. Um, I can throw this in some seltzer water. There's so many uses for it. The bottom line is I don't have to go to the grocery store and get lemons. Oh, and these sit on the tree for months. So, so my flowers will produce a baby lemon and they'll start to grow and those lemons won't turn yellow till about um, this November, December. So these guys started turning yellow in December and now it's March. Um, maybe a little bit earlier, but anyways, three, four, five months, some of these can sit on the tree for a year before they can be harvested. Um, so that's my Ponderosa lemon. I love it. I love the citrus trees. Again, a fun, 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 fun plant. You have people over your house. It starts conversations. They think you're some kind of fabulous gardener and I'm not. But all I do, I know how to water things and I turn a light on. And then you have all these wonderful conversation pieces. So start growing your own fruit, people. Stay tuned uh, for the next enrichment activity. Who knows what we're going to talk about.